Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Decriminalization for small amounts of drugs. That started this week in the province. Transit drivers are looking at job action in the wake of stalled contract talks. The Chilliwack School District is looking at the books and their largest budget on record. And the Giants? They're playing Vegas, baby. Josh will have more in sports. Our special guests this week include Matt Paisley and the Welcome Matt, your Chilliwack real estate update, as well a preview of the cancer fundraiser Hearts of Gold, plus our interview with the combined forces of the Sardis and Chilliwack Secondary Band Programs. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. The union representing Fraser Valley Transit drivers are promising job action should the contract talks stall literally in the parking lot. Wages are the number one issue. Job action would affect the major routes. Drivers are not collecting fares right now. There could be a minor disruption for handy dart services as well. Starting this week, there will no longer be criminal penalties for adults aged 18 and over in B.C. who possess over 2.5 grams or less of certain illegal drugs for only personal use. Now, there are some exemptions. Now, this means that instead of arresting, charging people, or seizing drugs, police will offer information to those people about local health and social supports, including treatment and recovery. Ironically, this is coming as Fraser Health is warning of a chunky white substance that's on the streets that's primarily car fentanyl. Fraser Health is not commenting about what's called gray fentanyl. It has a nickname of death, which is a very potent drug, and as of now, on the street and resistant to at least one or two doses of naloxone to bring back an overdose victim. It takes a lot of money to run a school district, and for the first time ever, the Chilliwack School District is anticipating to spend more than $200 million in the upcoming school year. Now, they are projecting expenses to come in a little north of $202 million. That's almost $17 million more than 2022. So, the 2023 amended budget was presented to the board in mid-January. The second and third readings of the 23 budget will be done at the next meeting. That's scheduled for February the 7th. Now, the budget must be submitted to the provincial gov government by the end of February. Now, the total breakdown of the budget can be found on the Chilliwack School Board website. It's been a year and a half since Alina Durham began advocating to get a missing adult alert in place in memory of her daughter, but nothing's been done. Shailene Bell, a 23-year-old mom, went missing January 30th of 2021. Her body was discovered in the Fraser River six months later, and that was near Coquitlam. This past week, a yearly vigil was held at Townsend Park, and again, family and friends asking the government and officials to create that adult alert. So it's similar to the Amber Alert for kids. Alina is convinced that such an alert system may have saved her daughter. Chill TV was at the vigil. So I'm standing here tonight with a commitment to honor my daughter, Shailene Bell, and pave the way for other families with a missing adult. In all due respect to our public safety minister, Mr. Marco Mendicino, and our public safety minister, Mike Farmworth, I am asking you to please seriously change the Amber Abduction Alert to have no age, to have no age limit. Why is there no federal legislation? I'm asking you personally, Mr. Marco Mendicino, to please fast track this and help me to help other families with a missing adult. What is the holdup? Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce holding their annual Business Excellent Awards, and that was on Saturday at the Cultural Center. And among the categories, the town butcher won the big prize for small and medium-sized business of the year. Cinnamon Bun Company winning New Business of the Year, and the complete list of winners can be found on the Chamber's social media. The upside with the recent sunny weather is that the conditions for a hike were simply awesome. Unfortunately, accidents do happen. Chilliwack Search and Rescue were on top of Mount Tom last Sunday to help out a hiker with injuries and a reminder that all search and rescue organizations are on call 24-7. They are all volunteer. And there have been some rumors on social media, no, they do not charge for their services. 
Now, this would be a trip of a lifetime. Sardis and Chilliwack Secondaries combining their concert band programs for a tour of Disneyland in the spring. The schools combining to a group of 85 students from grades 9 to grade 12. Chill TV was on hand to hear a rehearsal and speak with the organizers about the proposed trip and just how much this is going to cost. Chris Werner with uh, Sardis Secondary, along with Bob Tarr and Jens Neeson of Chilliwack Secondary, outlined the challenges. News of the week, and we are live at uh, Sardis Secondary, and this is the, the meetings of the minds. <laughs> Gentlemen, introduce yourself, and why are we here with big grins on our faces, obviously. I'm Bob Tarr, a uh, band teacher at Chilliwack Secondary. Chris Warner, band teacher at Sardis Secondary. And I'm Jens Nissen, one of the other band teachers at Chilliwack Secondary. And we're here because we're having a joint rehearsal to prepare Sardis and Chilliwack to head down to Disneyland in May. How long did this take to prepare? Because you, you got a lot of moving parts and a few students. Yeah. Yeah, um, we started talking about it last uh, Spring. last May. Actually, yeah. we had a meeting last May, um, suggested that we do this together. Um, so we got interest at that point, and then we've been working on it. We had our audition in October, um, so that we play on the stage down at Disneyland, and that's been accepted, which is very exciting for us to be able to do. So um, we've been working ever since. It's our second rehearsal together, so it's really exciting. How many students involved in this now? 85. Yeah. 85 students. Um, so it is a big band, and we were... Every time we get to do this, this is the second time that we've had the big rehearsal. We just love being in front of this many students and they're so responsive and they just, they sound so great and they get along so well together. And you know, there's no rivalry between the Sardis and Chilliwack side. It's just, everybody's has a common goal and yeah. it's so much fun yeah. being in front yeah. of them. Um, we're looking for any kind of fundraising we can get, some corporate sponsorships, some businesses to chip in. Um, we, the students are paying, but you know, they're paying about $1,400 a kid. Um, and if we could lower that for them, that would be amazing. A couple things that we're doing um, is we're putting on two dessert nights, one at the end of February and one at the beginning of March. One at, one in, uh, at the CSS side and one over here um, to, to fundraise. It'll be a night of like smooth jazz, combo jazz, uh, and some great desserts. Um, and so one is February 28th, and I think the other one is March 7th. 7th. Yeah, 7th Something or 9th. Like Something like that. Anyway. The first annual Hearts of Gold Gala Fundraiser for Childhood Cancer Research, hosted by Trevor McDonald, is going to be a fun, informative, and inspirational night and raising money for much-needed funds for groundbreaking research for childhood cancers. Tickets are now on sale, 50 bucks each, available through the Cultural Center box office. The show is coming up Thursday, February the 9th. Plenty to eat and drink, lots of mingling, music from Andrew Christopher, and a silent auction. We talked with Trevor and organizer Carmen Putz. That interview coming up in just a moment. We also have an interview with Matt Paisley and the Welcome Matt, an update on the local real estate scene, and then Josh with Sports. News of the week continues with Carmen Potts, Trevor McDonald. We are talking about something that is uh, a first for everybody. It is the Hearts of Gold Gala. So you guys, tell us what this is all about. I already know a little bit about it, but this should be a really fun evening. Yes, it's going to be a great evening. It's all about raising awareness about childhood cancer and raising some funds, much needed funds for research. Um, it's going to be a fun night. There's casino, table games, live music with Andrew Christopher, silent auction, a live auction with some amazing items up for bid. Helicopter ride to the top of Mount Chinam. Amazing. Um, a West Jet flight anywhere you want to go so it's it's going to be a really fun night but also very informative um, about what's happening with childhood cancer one of the things we want to raise obviously is the awareness uh and your own personal story uh has has a lot to do with it uh do you feel comfortable talking about that yes i do yeah um lost my son dylan last january um about a year ago he was 19 and uh yeah he had a, a pretty rare aggressive cancer that um, does not have any effective treatments for it um i was very very shocked when we were told that so um there's not enough funding that is being given towards childhood cancer research and that's what has really um spurred me to um, get involved 
and uh, want to make a difference. Uh, now, do you need volunteers uh, leading up to this, or are you are you well staffed, or, or what do you need from the community right now, outside of buying tickets? Uh, yes, tickets. <laughs> Get your tickets. There's uh, lots of tickets for sale. Um, volunteers, I'm pretty good on that, but if anyone wants to donate any more items towards the silent auction or live auction, um, or just um, come on come on as a sponsor. Uh, to help cover some of the, the costs of running the event so we can raise more money uh, to go to research. It don't just to, for, you know, yeah. for, sorry to cut you off for a second, just, to, you know, uh, we'd love obviously for people to show up. It's a great way to spend the Thursday night at the Cultural Center. Uh, Carmen has put together an amazing evening. I'm so proud to be uh, hosting it. And, and uh, again, can't say it enough. It's an evening of entertainment and information, but um, $50 a ticket, a great price uh, um, to come and be a part of a really amazing event. Um, and, and again, just raising awareness for something so very important. And, uh, what, a, what a way to spend a Thursday night right here in your community to support Carmen and what she's doing. I'm so proud to be a part of it. Now, again, to get tickets, uh, Cultural Center box office, or do we just go to the Hearts of Gold Facebook page, or what do we do here? Uh, tickets are through the Cultural Center box office, either online or by calling them or um, going in person. Absolutely. Show what culturalcenter.ca. Okay. And there is a, a Facebook page as well, which is great. You guys are definitely covering social media. Trevor, Carmen, looking forward to this. This is going to be uh, a lot of fun, but it's also going to be tugging at the heartstrings. And uh, uh, I Let's let's be honest. Cancer has touched a lot of people, especially, you know, we're practically family when it comes to uh, our circles. Uh, so this is going to be something else. February the 9th, Cultural Center. Again, thanks both of you for uh, taking some time. Thank you, Don. And you're watching News of the Week. We are well into the new year, and boy, did it ever bring in some massive changes to the real estate landscape. There is so much to cover in this episode, so if there is something you want more information on, give me a call or send me a text or email. Watch to the end, and I'll touch on the new tax assessments and what this means for you moving forward. Canada's new temporary ban on foreign home buyers came into effect on January 1st of this year. The new measure bars most non-residents and foreign commercial enterprises from buying residential properties in Canada for the next two years. This temporary ban sends the world a mixed message as Canada is ramping up immigration, but few BC experts expect it to have any major effect in this province, as there are some several deep reaching e exemptions. Immigrants and temporary foreign workers with work permits are just two of the groups that are exempt. Also, the ban does not include properties worth less than $500,000 or those that are outside of major metropolitan areas. Following the introduction of the 20% foreign buyers tax several years ago, the percentage of foreign buyers dropped to less than half a percent, so don't expect to drop to zero to have much effect on housing prices. Also, on January 1st, the BC government introduced the HBRP the home buyer rescission period, as a consumer protection measure to give home buyers time to consider whether a purchase is right for them. HBRP gives buyers the right to rescind their offer up to three business days after the offer is accepted. The extra time is intended to help buyers fully consider whether a purchase is right for them under any market conditions, including in the face of rising interest rates and any high pressure sales. The home buyer rescission period includes a rescission or cancellation fee of 0.25% of the purchase price, or $250 for every $100,000. For those who cancel their contract to help ensure that all parties are taking the transaction seriously. For example, if the buyer exercises the right of rescission on a $1 million home, they would be required to pay $2,500 to the seller. Will this help people analyze their purchase decisions to ensure they are comfortable 
Or will this new law act as a vehicle for unscrupulous investors to make multiple offers and tie up properties as they look to get the best deal? Only time will tell. And finally, it's property assessment time again, and the confusion over property assessed values is definitely a hot topic. Last year was a down year in the real estate industry. Many homeowners were expecting to see a drop in assessed value for their properties. However, much to everyone's surprise, many properties still assessed 15 to 20 percent higher than they did last year. The reason given by the tax authority was that the amounts are based on July of last year. Just for the record, last July was the worst July on record for sales in recent memory. And at that time, we were well into the decline in home prices locally. It will be interesting to see what mill rate the city uses to determine what we owe in taxes this year. Anyhow, that's all for today, folks. And don't forget, if you or someone you know is looking for any real estate help or advice in the future, please don't hesitate to call. I'm never too busy for your referrals. Thanks for watching and bye for now. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Sports. Josh here with you once again. Uh, what are we doing today? Uh, sports. That's it's literally in the title. So let's just jump into it. We're going to start with some football because the BC Lions have locked up another key piece of their defensive unit and a local boy to boot as linebacker Bo Lacombo has signed a contract extension through the 2024 season. Lacombo was actually eligible to become a free agent on February 14th, so they're very happy to get that locked up right now. Said Lacombo from his home here in Chilliwack, quote, This franchise means so much to me and it's exciting for me and my family to stay in the orange and black. Our linebacker room and the entire defense have raised their game to a higher level, and we are all looking forward to making even more plays in 2023. Born in the Congo and raised in Abbotsford, Bo was a standout with the Oregon Ducks before being drafted by the Lions, 21st overall in the 2013 CFL Draft. He will return this spring for his 8th CFL season and his 7th with the hometown Lions after a solid 2022 campaign where he was able to record 52 total tackles, 2 sacks, and 1 pass knockdown in 13 regular season games. Bo was named a Western Division All-Star in his first full season of 2015 and the CFL's Most Outstanding Canadian in 2021. Sticking with football, as we mentioned last week, the Chillac Giants NFL flag team is headed to Las Vegas to compete in the 2023 NFL Flag Football Championships at the NFL's Pro Bowl. This is incredibly cool. They'll be taking part in International Bowl against teams from China, Japan, Australia, Ghana, the UK, Germany, Mexico, and Regina and Toronto as well. They will be playing games all this weekend, beginning actually tonight. And I am actually getting word that we have the head coach, Colin Boyd, on the line right now, pretty much from the tarmac in Las Vegas. Uh, so let's do a quick break, get that hooked up, and go straight to that interview. We are very pleased to be joined today by Colin Boyd and some members of the Chilliwack Flag Football Championship team that is in Las Vegas. You guys look like you just landed on the tarmac down there. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing great. We're doing great, Josh. All these guys just checked in. We're ready to compete at the NFL Pro Bowl, the International Flag Bowl. We got uh, teams from China, Japan, Australia, uh, Germany, UK, and two other Canadian teams that we're going to play against. So these guys are all pumped up. What do you guys say? Go Giants real quick. Giants. And we can give you lots more as we come through. Absolutely. Coach, what are your expectations for this week, and what are you looking to get out of it? Oh, these guys are, these guys are pumped up. They've worked very hard for the whole uh, season since this time last year, so they're ready to compete. They're ready to, uh, to come out of here with another ring kind of thing. Go and do BC proud. Have an amazing time, you guys, and we'll check in when you get back, all right? Oh, we look forward to it. Thank you so much for having us. What do you guys say? Thank you. Thank you. No problem, guys. Good luck this weekend.
Thank you so much, Colin, and uh, congrats to you guys. Have an amazing weekend. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I don't think I've ever done an interview quite like that, so that was fantastic. Uh, good luck, guys. I think they're going to represent BC very well. Let's go on with the rest of sports, where we now return to the ongoing soap opera that is the Vancouver Canucks. In this week's episode, just as the NHL shuts down for the All-Star break, on Monday, Canucks GM Patrick Alvine announced the team has acquired forward Anthony Bolivier, top prospect Atu Rati, and a top 12 protected 2023 first round draft pick from the New York Islanders in exchange for the now former Canucks captain, Bo Horvat. This brings a, a resolution, pardon me, to the ongoing speculation and saga around Horvat as last summer's massive extension of JT Miller and last week's extension of Andre Kuzmenko made it nearly impossible for the Canucks to also extend their captain under the salary cap. For his part, Bo made matters uh, more difficult this season by stepping up his game yet again, scoring an absolutely ridiculous rate that places him in the top 10 in the league. The Canucks will be hoping that the Islanders actually fade down the stretch this season, as should the Islanders miss the playoffs, that 2023 first-round pick reverts to an unprotected 2024 pick, meaning that if the Islanders also struggle next year, the Canucks could be looking at a top 10 pick and another deep draft. So that's what they'll be hoping for. As for Ratu and Bolivier, it appears that both players will begin in Abbotsford, at least in the short term. Well, I think it was meant to be a secret, but their mayor kind of let it slip. The Pacific Junior Hockey League announced the approval of a new franchise for the city of Port Coquitlam, set to begin play in 2023-2024 season. Their last expansion was Chilliwack with the Jets, who got a little stalled on the runway with the, during the 2021 season due to COVID, but were finally cleared for takeoff uh, 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 for the 21-22 season at the Sardis Sports Complex. While the new Poco franchise has yet to pick a name, the club will play out of the newly renovated Port Coquitlam Community Centre, making use of the John Ballier Arena, which seats 780 spectators. This would be the PGHL's 14th franchise, with other local teams being the aforementioned Jets, the Abbotsford Pilots, and the Mission City Outlaws. In a very quick rugby update, the 8-2 Chilliwack Crusaders are now 9-2 with a 19-7 me, win over the Langley Rugby Club. Next up for both the men's and women teams are home matches against United from the Tri-Cities. Chilliwack Golf Club announced that the Fraser Valley Golf Trail Cards will be available at the Western Canada Golf Expo. The Expo will be coming to the Abbotsford Tradex on J February 24th and 25th and is going to feature a ton of amazing stuff including a large demo range, seminar stage, multi-vendor uh, retail spaces, putting and long drive contests, all kinds of family-friendly activities, and I believe over 50 exhibitors. There will also be a section, except a section, pardon me, for those interested in a career in the golf industry. So if you've ever considered that, this might be your chance to check it out. Vancouver is one of the 16 host cities for the 2026 FIFA Men's World Cup, but the city is facing a bill of $230 million in additional expenses. So to help cover the shortfall, it was announced late last week that a temporary hotel tax will add 2.5% to every $100 paid on short-term accommodations starting this week and ending February 1st of 2030. Vancouver is actually only expected to host one or two early round matches at BC Play Stadium in that 2026 tournament. All right, that's all we've got for sports today. A lot going on, so stay tuned for next week. When we've, I'm sure we'll update on the boys down in Las Vegas. Congrats to them again. Good luck, and we'll be back with Carrie with the weather. Chill TV weekend weather with Carrie Moore. Okay, Carrie, it is Groundhog Day. Doesn't matter if the critter saw its shadow or not back in Puxatawney or in Wyerton. Are we going to have rain this weekend? Thanks, Don. I'm not so sure about trusting a rodent and Groundhog Day and all that fun stuff, but you are right about the rain. It's going to be up to 9 degrees, down to about 5 throughout the weekend. By the end of the week, we're going to get a little chillier, but not so bad. Highs of 7, down to about 3. So you have a great week in the rain, Don, and I'm going to have one too. Back to you. Thanks, Carrie. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note and your graphics and your pictures and your video to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.